Hi, this is Bob Scully and welcome to another edition of The World Show, Entrepreneurs The Next 20, where we celebrate our 20 years on public television by introducing you to some entrepreneurs to watch, people who are really going places. This week, Louis Roy, president of Optel, a man who has been quoted as saying, money first doesn't work. Now, you don't often hear that from entrepreneurs. And indeed, he is a business success, a solid success. He's got factories in Ireland, in uh, Canada, in uh, Africa, in Brazil, and uh, they're really going places. He's one of the world leaders in traceability. The pedigree of chemicals and, and pharmaceuticals, little pills, that's his specialty. He built all that, it's a wonderful company, but while he was building Optel, he was also harking back to lessons from his father. His father worked for an international organization, would take him around the world, sometimes to very troubled areas, and would teach his son, these things have to be fixed, we have to work for that. And so he put his idealism simultaneously on the same track as his company, which is an ecologically sound company, but he also goes on these irrepressibly idealistic crusades. He can't resist a good cause. For instance, the disappearance of the periodic table. Huh? Yes, the periodic table that they used to put on the wall in chemistry class is indeed shrinking because we are mining some of those rare substances so fast for our cell phones and so on. Soon there'll be no iridium left. That's quite the cause and he's adopted it. It's just one example. Louis Roy will be back later in the season to talk about some of those initiatives. But first, here's the business story. Louis Roy, in, in Optel Vision, uh, there's the word vision and that's actually key. You see everything, you look at everything. What is it that you do? Uh, we do an uh, automatic uh, inspection system that check the, the quality of the product during the manufacturing and also implement a traceability feature on the product to be able to view them, them later on in the supply chain. Mainly pharmaceuticals? N currently mainly pharmaceutical. We do a little bit of medical device, uh, chemical product also, but our core mar segment market is pharmaceutical for the moment. And the, uh, the whole idea of traceability is, I think it's a modern idea, it's fairly recent. Mm -hmm. Technology didn't exist to do it and people didn't even think of it. But I guess this, is your, this company is a little bit uh, a, a child of the big scares like the, the Tylenol scare and, and, and all these uh, horrible things that uh, happened. That this is where it comes from. That, that's when people started wanting traceability. Yeah, and especially in, in, uh, in the pharmaceutical industry, there is a, a lot of counterfeited drug. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially under developed countries, mm -hmm. uh, there is a, an estimate that there's about one million people dying every year because of counterfeited product. Oh. So people take a pill and they, let's say insulin and they think, oh, okay, I'm going to take my shot, but mm -hmm. it's water. So what happened? You know, of course, they get diabetic coma. Exactly. So th there's a, a huge trend, uh, but in many sectors, but pharmaceutical is the most critical because it's, it's a health uh, question. Uh, so there is regulation all over the world that are stepping out to say, okay, we need to make the traceability of the product to stop the counterfeited product uh, to the end user. And so its uh, regulation is sort of enforcing it, but do the companies do it willingly or reluctantly? Well, it's a big investment, of course, because you have to implement uh, technologies on the, on the process, on the manufacturing side, and then on the warehouse and the distribution chain up to the pharmacist. So. It's a big change, you know, it's a, and it's a huge technology change for the industry. Uh, so, but it's going to bring the industry into the 4.0 when we're talking about that. Yeah. It, traceability is a key to bring uh, all the, the supply chain and the industry, industrial world into the, those, this industry 4.0. And, and um, the technology obviously has grown and evolved because long ago, we all remember the old detective shows, the mystery shows, yeah. where they would find the criminal because he used, I don't know, a milk carton and they had the serial number on the carton. But this is much, much more advanced than that. You can go right to a single pill. Yeah, they, it, it will have to go to a single pill because in many uh, countries, uh, the, the product is delivered into, uh, let's say, oh, here it's three pill for you. Uh, mm -hmm. In pharmacies like in India or in Africa, they deliver almost pill by pill. So how can a consumer make sure that he can uh, authenticate that he's going to have the right product? So it needs to go up to uh, the individual dosage. It's like vaccine. It's, it's easy to counterfeit a vaccine, just put water in a vial. Of course, yeah. But then, so it's why you're going to need to have at the vial level uh, an notification feature or a serial number to be to allow the, the nurse in Africa to scan, oh, it's the right one. And how, how is it done? 
it, it's really a mix of technology. It, it's uh, like uh, in Optel, we handle a, a machine. So we design machine to handle product on the manufacturing side to serialize, to inspect, ensure the quality. And then we have uh, layers of software like line controller, plant controller, uh, th that allow the, the, the flow of the data to be able to connect that to the end user. So it's uh, real-time computing, it is uh, cloud-based computing also. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting because the, those technology are quite complex. And for us, the more it is complex, the more, of course, we're protected against our competitor because we are handling complex technology, so we are securing our market. And there's a, how, how is the signature put on? The signature is, is put on by a different way. Usually, uh, it could be a laser printer uh, or an inkjet printer, etc. It, it's usually uh, visible uh, information, but that is related to a database. So, this visual information, uh, when you read that with a, a cell phone, you connect to a database that know. Okay, this product is yes, it's supposed to be in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not supposed to be in Canada. So you can control with the database the flow of the product and then detect anomalies in the supply chain. And how often do they come to you to to verify and control? In other words, when you're doing this, they're following regulation. Mm -hmm. Then they put the product out into the market. Somebody uses it. How often do you get phone calls? from a hospital in Africa saying, well, you know, well, we have somebody who's sick and uh, we think. Yeah, we're deploying the technologies, but the, the, all the communication is, um, uh, like in US, it will be the FDA who will mm -hmm. manage those complaints because it, it's health critical, uh, or it's the, the end customer like Pfizer and others that manage directly the call. So we just deploy the technology and let the, the regulation agency and the pharmaceutical industry to manage those uh, events. So today, if uh, somebody with evil intentions were trying to redo the Tylenol caper or the Tylenol scare, as long as we were, as long as the population could be alerted, mm -hmm. you could prevent that because they would, they could uh, check each each vial that they buy for each bottle that they buy. Yeah, technology is there, but again, the infrastructure need to be deployed. It will take a couple of years because you have to uh, teach people, like uh, in the pharmacies or in the mm -hmm. hospital, they don't have the equipment yet. It will have to come, probably in a couple of years, it will be connected. Currently, we're starting at the manufacturing, and then we'll go into the distribution, and then up to the hospital. So it's a probably a five to 10 years deployment, because it again, it's very complex technologies, it's cloud-based, it's uh, a lot of security, of course, uh, yeah, of course. into those. Uh, and and uh, even though this isn't where you're, you're in the health field, um, people are curious, I'm sure people listening, people are curious a lot about the traceability of food. Um, because there's food poisoning. I mean, we saw that many times, salmonella. And in some cases, they're able to say it came, it's lettuce that came from this field in California and so right. on, which is pretty impressive. But how far can that go? Like one day we'll be able to say, my T-bone steak came from this cow. And how, how, how far can it go? Well, uh, with technologies, it, 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 we're not reinventing technologies, but we're connecting information. I think the big move on what we're hearing about the big data is just we're connecting things together. Mm -hmm. So with uh, an event, so let's say we're serializing uh, a pack of, uh, of, of cheese. Uh, so w with this, you can attach a quality report. And then you can attach also uh, w uh, with the quality report where from which batch of from so which farm comes the mill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can create a pedigree of every product that the end consumer buy. And, and that's the goal. We call it a complete traceability from the, the production or the extraction mm -hmm. of the good, the gross material, yeah. and then to the production of the good, and then to the distribution, and up to the usage of the good. A complete traceability will secure the network completely. And also, we think traceability is going to be the key to solve a lot of uh, societal problems uh, that we have, like food waste. It's about 30% yeah. of the food that is wasted. Why? In proper tracking, you send too much product, let you to this grocery where they, mm -hmm. they don't sell it uh, all, or you don't keep the, the, the right temperature during the, um, the, the, the transportation of it. Or, uh, so having all those information together, we think it will allow uh, to have a much more efficient supply chain, especially in the food where you know this 30% of waste in food production could feed people who are starving in Africa. Sure, yeah. 
And and are you open to diversifying? I mean, you you're known for traceability yeah. mainly in pharmaceuticals. Okay. Is it an interesting area for you to enter uh, uh, food or not? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we uh, currently we, uh, we we estimate that we are the number one in traceability worldwide because pharmaceutical was the first one to deploy uh, traceability as a regulation. So we develop technologies uh, and software and the processes to deploy that into mm -hmm. industry. And of course, it, it, for us, it's, uh, it's natural to go, okay, we have this expertise and there is a need uh, and we can help humanity, we can help the world by having a better supply chain, reduce waste, uh, sure. make it more efficient. So of course, we're gonna use traceability to keep building the company. And also, we have a very uh, uh, unique uh, mission: is we we want to grow as the, as large as we can the company because we believe at large the largest will be as a company, and the more customer we'll have, the more people we will um, touch, the more influence we'll have to uh, deploy the more sustainable behavior in the, in the community. So we have a mission that is. Yeah, more important, and we're using traceability to influence uh, positively the, the collectivity. So uh, the you're community. out ahead, you're ahead of the pack. You're a trailblazer in exactly. a way. And yeah. and how did you pick? Because you are the founder. These are your choices. Uh, why traceability? How how did you f discover it? Uh, it? It's interesting. We have to go back early. Uh, I decided to found the company uh, really because. Um, I had a, an inconfort inside me. You know, they, they, I, I lived in Africa. My father worked in uh, an underdeveloped country. Mm -hmm. In Africa, I travel all over the world, uh, in Asia, South America, and we always dis had discussion about that. It's something is not working properly in, in uh, the way we manage the resource, the distribution of wealth, uh, the healthcare, etc. Uh, so I decided to start a company right out of school, and mm. with no idea at all of what I'm going to do, but. My mission was, I'm going to start a company and try to solve problems and show that you can have a company that can benefit the collectivity, the community. Uh, and it's a capitalist company. We're making profit. Mm -hmm. We're growing. We have an incredible business. An incredible business. Yeah. We treat well our You're employees. You're in the hundreds of millions of bucks. Uh, like, exactly. And we're working. making huge profit. Uh, but with that, we accomplish ourselves even better because we have an incredible impact on our collectivity, on our community. So we, this is why we started the company. And then we had technology. So uh, I'm an electrical engineer. I was a, a good programmer, uh, strong in optics, uh, electronic. Uh, so with that, we went to, an, to the industry and say, OK, what can we do for you? Uh, uh, so okay. we did that for the industry. And then they came out, oh, we have a lot of quality problems. We have a lot of traceability problem. And now with the, the, uh, the FDA and the other regulation agencies say, well, we have a counterfeit problem. So it came, hey, here, we have the knowledge, we have the technology, and we have the will to serve the, uh, the collectivity and to do something right. Well, it's great. You know, with our technology, we'll probably save millions of lives. Uh, when mm -hmm. it will all be deployed. And with traceability in the food, we'll be able to optimize the supply chain and then allow more food to be directed to the people who need it more, etc. So we are really doing what we started the company for. It was a tough road uh, and keep believing that, but when you have a strong mission, y you can go across any difficulty. And you were among the first, I assume. You, the, 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 this was in the air. People wanted traceability but nobody was really doing it. So well, you were out of the gate first. Uh, in, we had some competitor, uh, uh, like uh, we all know some pills uh, mm -hmm. f uh, that are very popular, the, you know, the, the blue pill in Triangle. <laughs> yeah. uh, they, they, they had a, a, it's one of the most counterfeited product. Of course, it doesn't kill people. It just uh -huh. sometimes created a problem in your couple, in, in yeah. your relationship when you take a, a placebo. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so, so th there was some company that were there first, but the, a lot of our uh, competitors are m more comfortable either, either doing purely software, either pu doing purely machine. But at Optel, we decide to embrace complexity and we love complexity. So we decide to do machine. We decide to do software. We decide to do uh, cloud-based. 
uh, analytics, uh, mathematics, etc., electronics. So we embrace the complexity and also we decide to be global. Uh, we open a plant in Ireland, in Limerick first. Then we open the plant in uh, Sao Paulo in Brazil. Goa. We open a plant in Goa, India. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hey, it's a tough job, you know, managing people like in India, managing people who are nine and a half hours uh, offset in time zone, it, it's quite a challenge. I'm sure. uh, and yeah. managing all those cultures all over the world and having them to work together in an organic way, it, it, it's quite a challenge. But we like that. We like challenge that. And again, the more we have employees and the more represented we are everywhere in every country of the world, the more impact we'll have. And that Obviously, will yeah. pave the road yeah. to a, a new type a of enterprise. Future. Yeah, yeah. And, and and so you are you've defined yourself then as sort of one-stop shopping. If a, if a, if a pharmaceutical company comes yeah. to you, you will do the signature on the on the on the product uh, and the traceability mechanism and everything else. You deliver all of that to them. Yeah, yeah. At the plant level, at the pharmaceutical level, of course, there is supplier at the higher level uh, for uh, exchanging data, etc. But uh, for the our customer, we're a twin key solution. And did you, at first, because this was new, uh, find resistance to, to paying for it? In other words, maybe a lot of companies said, "Yeah, I like that, but you know, I'm not going to add the price to my drug or whatever. It's yeah. too much trouble, or the consumer won't want it." Was there resistance? Well, of course, we had help from the regulation agency around the <laughs> world, so it, it was a help. Either you complying with the law, either you you don't sell your product anymore in U.S. or in China or uh -huh. in India or in in yeah, Turkey or in Europe. So they don't have much choice to embrace that. So we're getting into now an era where we we have to show that they added value, and again, the waste in the food and uh, the, the even. Uh, the traceability can be applied to a global mm -hmm. and, uh, for, for reduction of the waste, re uh, improvement of the efficiency of the plant. So we want to bring that up to the customer so they, they, they'll see a payback. Uh. And, and uh, is there traceability of the traceability specialists? In other words, do the regulatory agencies look over you and, and, and have demands on you, the FDA and so on? Do they uh, check you uh, out? Indirectly. Um, the FDA have a strong um, audit process for our customer, and then they are ob um, obliged. They have to audit us. So mm -hmm. you know, almost uh, every month we have uh, some of our large customers that spend a couple of days at the office and they see all our, <coughs> our processes, uh, the quality control that we have. Uh, they are forced to do that, otherwise the FDA, when they see an optical solution, they say, well, okay, I want to see the audit report from this company, mm -hmm. and if you haven't audited us, I, I cannot consider that you've done a, a good job. And then FDA can close a plant or stop. Uh, wow, uh, yeah, that's pretty severe. Yeah. And I would, I would guess also that as time goes by, as a percentage of the price, your contribution, what you, what you add to the price is probably negligible by now because yeah. it, uh, you're spread out over huge quantities yeah. and so on. Yeah, it, the impact is probably a few less than a percent on every product. But again, later on, I think the pharmaceutical industry will start benefit from uh, having a, a return on this investment. So we we'll, should see a, a, a reduction uh, on the, uh, of the cost uh, at the end. And one thing I have to, this is uh, sort of a bit outside our subject, but after all, it's in the research on you when you were talking to, to Francine Blaise, to our senior editor, um, this is the first time I've ever heard of this, and I asked you before the interview, I found it so fascinating. You are concerned, we're all concerned about disappearing polar bears, disappearing ozone, all kinds of things are disappearing, and we regret it and we want to prevent it. You are concerned about the disappearance of certain elements from the periodic table. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. <coughs> Some elements, you say 25% of the elements of the periodic table will be gone in a few years. Yeah. What, what do you mean? Uh, again, a step back. I founded the company to be able to, to, to try to influence the world into a sustainable world. Mm -hmm. And currently, you know, since 1972, there was the Stockholm Convention. You know, we were quite young at the time. But there's scientific for all over the world that say that the way we run our consumption is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. We extract much, much more than we do, uh, considering you know water. Our renewable resource or non-renewable resource, we take much more out 
than what the herb can give. And uh, let's take the example of indium. It's a rare material. Uh, some says that maybe there's still indium at the rate, the current rate, which there's about 1.2 billion people who are in the middle class who are consuming electronics. Indium is in most processor, in all the touchscreen, etc. The current rate there is for maybe 15 years. Okay, maybe 25 years. But the middle class in 10 years will be about 5 billion. Mm -hmm. Everyone will ha want to have more computer, more phone, etc. There'll be an incredible pressure. So if everyone goes this and we are, are throwing away this indium later on into wasteland where it will just be diffuse, impossible to grab again, there will be nothing left for our children or the children of our children. No indium. No more indium, no more ilium. Indium might, be, might take 50 years, uh, but ilium, hey, well, we're inflating helium. balloon for kids, yeah. and then when the balloon you know, uh, floats, away. floats away, it goes into the stratosphere. There is no way to get the ilium back. Ilium is not a renewable resource. And so it's limited. It, it's limited. Uh, I guess in Quattara they might have a big, uh, big reserve there, uh, 50 years maybe. But then, Ilium is used in electronic manufacturing, in medical imaging system, etc. They won't be any more for our children or the children of this our children. This is a new cause. This is very interesting because everybody can see in cases of water, we, we know that well, mm -hmm. water is semi-renewable, but yes and no. Um, but this is really a new point of view. It's stuff that we get out of the ground that cannot be replaced, obviously. Uh, and that we're sure, to, we're, we're sure to waste. But the Indium, maybe they could go around to the dumps and get the old cell phones. Yeah. But it's going to be, it, it, we have to put that right away. In fact, since 1972, we know that there should be no, no industrial waste. We should all recycle. It, to recycle. They call it the circular economy or the symbiotic mm -hmm, industrial mm -hmm. world. We have to go toward that. Uh, uh, so currently, we're living uh, at credit. We're all, yes, we have a perfect life. Humanity has never been as best as it is now, but we have a huge step, not only a financial debt, we have a huge step on our maybe probably environmental, climate change, etc., but also on the resource, natural resource. In, in a, I think, uh, over a, a two thirds of the year, we're consuming uh, what the herd can do in one year. Mm -hmm. no, it, this is, we're living at yeah. credit and yeah. we're all dumping the problem to our children and I refuse to leave it like that. Uh, I refuse that we keep burning our word and not caring about our children. So they can, this is why I started the company and this is why we, we want to, in fact, this is why we're talking here. Yeah, thank you course. for the invitation because we have a message to pass. I think profit first doesn't work. It should be, what is the impact of, of every enterprise, every action we do, should be a positive impact for our community. And then, profit after. And it's what we're doing. All what we do is having a positive impact on our collectivity, on our employees, on our surrounding, everywhere we are. And then profit comes second. And of course, we're making profit, and then we can reinvest and mm -hmm. make, make keeping this impact. But we have to change the way we think. But that, indeed we do, because it's going to be tough to get people excited about helium, because they can't relate it to their health or anything like that. Um, but, but you're saying, you know, one day we'll regret it. It'll be gone. Yeah, it's like climate change. You know, okay, some people say, oh, it's not human cause. Whatever. <clears throat> climate change, most obviously, is going to increase the temperature here. And we're not doing nothing, but we can do something for our, kid, our children, because yes, probably during our living, we might not suffer too much, maybe some bigger storm, but the children of our children, it will be the hell for them. Mm -hmm. So what do we do, okay? We keep closing our eyes, or we try to do something all together, even if it's human cause or it's not human cause, you know, whatever your, your thinking is, we all need to act to make sure that we have the right, a better word for our children. But I think sure. in our, I feel that in our community, people have kids, they love their kids, but they don't care about the world they will live in. Uh, and it's not good. No, you're I, right. I, I disagree no, totally on this. Uh, and it's a, it's a form of idealism. Like I say, the cause it, to, to me is entirely new. I probably do the people watching. But next time my kids want a new tablet for Christmas, I'll say, no, 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 we're yeah. not going to waste any indium. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, I'm not uh, buying it. <laughs> and I think uh, uh, there is some, some countries, and it should be everywhere, a program obsolescence. Like when you buy 
a computer or something like that. And that it's only good for one, two or three years because they send you upgrade and then mm -hmm. suddenly it doesn't work. This, this should be criminal. You know, when you do something, it should last at least 10 years. And when it's finished, it should be consigned, returned to the manufacturer who's going to re recycle it, revalorize it, mm -hmm. extract the indium, etc. Instead of sending it in a dump yeah. where it's going to be a the waste and create pollution. Be lost, yeah. Uh, it, well, it's, it's, uh, anyway, it's, it's a fascinating discovery for me. And uh, I'm sure that there'll, there'll be many more on your road. And so long life to you and to Optel. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Louis Roy of Optel was our guest this week on Entrepreneurs the Next 20. I'm Bob Scully. Have a great week. Thanks.